So we're here at the CS 2019, and the, who are you? <laughs> My name is Scott Wilkinson. I am with twit.tv, and uh, looking around the show for any and everything uh, having to do with video and audio. I'm not really looking for autonomous cars or drones or anything like that, specifically TVs, projectors, and uh, audio products. This is the mecca of the whole world, of the whole year for this kind of stuff, isn't it? Yes, well, this and CEDIA, the Consumer Electronics Design and Installation Association, which happens in September, October timeframe, that's more about projectors and custom home theaters. This show is the mecca for flat panel TVs, uh, well, really flat panel TVs are the main story here, and some projectors as well. At the Hisense press conference, it was a, I think it was a little bit funny, they said they sold 660,000 uh, displays on, on Black Friday. Well, the Black Friday weekend, I believe. So uh, that means, does it kind of mean that uh, the timing of CES comes when the new models are coming out and the Black Friday is to sell out the old models? Correct, that is correct. And uh, so they, they do try to get it, get things out for the new models, which typically come out, as far as TVs are concerned, come out in the springtime. So there's two, actually two times, good times to buy TVs. One is Black Friday weekend, and the other is Super Bowl Sunday, or in preparation for Super Bowl Sunday, because a lot of TVs go on deep sale then as well, and that's closer to when the next year's models will come out. 4K TVs are like, it's impossible not to buy a 4K TV, you should buy a yeah. TV now, right? It's almost impossible not to buy a, uh, impossible not to buy a 4K TV, yeah. You can get, what's called full HD or 1080p uh, in the very low end of many manufacturers' lines. So at the very bottom end, you can find 1080p still, but for the most part, it's all 4K now. And uh, uh, the HDR and the quantum dots, it's even, is it even more awesome than 4K resolution? Oh, absolutely. HDR is by far the biggest improvement in picture quality since HD took over from SD, standard definition. Uh, Ultra HD or 4K doesn't make that much of a difference over 1080p or, or HD. What makes a big difference is HDR, high dynamic range, which is the difference between the black and the brightest white. And the wider that difference is, the more impressive the picture is and the more realistic it looks. So that is a huge deal and anybody looking for a new TV really should make sure they get one that has HDR capability, which most of them do, except again for the very lowest end. Uh, and that's gonna give you a huge improvement in picture quality. The peak luminance is the one of the very important factors, but uh, is it advertised enough? No. Because isn't it what makes the best HDR is if you have a highest peak luminance? Yes, that's half of the story. The other half of the story is the black level. And different technologies do a better or worse job at black level and at peak luminance. LCD TVs, which are now illuminated by LEDs, light emitting diodes, get brighter than any other technology currently, but they don't get as black. OLED, organic light emitting diode, doesn't get as bright as LCD TVs, but it gets much deeper black. So my, I prefer myself the blacks of OLED. I'm a black level junkie, so I prefer that over the brighter picture of LCD TVs with not as good black level. But well, that means uh, to get the best experience of the OLED, do you have an OLED? I do. You need to have a little bit of a darker room to get the best... Uh, I don't think so. Room? I, it, that's the common wisdom, but I believe that it's not true. You can have a projector in a light, in a room with some light in it, on what's called an ambient light rejecting screen. That'll only give you a hundred nits coming off the screen at best, and it looks just fine. OLEDs will get up to 500 nits, roughly. LCDs uh, can get up to a thousand, two thousand. At this show this year, we're seeing LCDs up to close to 3,000 nits. So they're much brighter, but I don't feel a need for that, and I can watch an OLED in a well-lit room, no problem. And uh, uh, what do you think about this laser TV from Hisense? 
It's basically a projector, right? Correct, it's an ultra short throw projector. I recently wrote a review of the dual color uh, Hisense 4K laser TV, it's on ABS forum. And that uses two lasers, a red and a blue. And the blue laser also generates the green light by hitting a green phosphor. This year, Hisense has introduced a three laser ultra short throw projector, which has a red laser, a green laser, and a blue laser. And so no need for phosphors, no need for color wheel. The color gamut, the range of colors that it can reproduce is very wide. And being an ultra short throw projector, of which there are now several, it can be placed very close to the wall, within inches of the wall, and it shoots up onto the wall to a 100 inch screen or 120 inch screen. So it gives you a 100 inch or 120 inch, essentially, flat panel TV uh, with, with a projected image rather than a direct image. That screen is so much lighter than a flat panel TV, especially a 100 inch one, that it's much easier to mount on the wall. The material that does the screen is not cheap, right? It's, no, but it, you know, Screen Innovations makes one. What you need is a very special screen called an ultra short throw ambient light rejecting screen or UST ALR. Basically the light comes up at a steep angle, hits the screen and then bounces out straight out into the room. That requires a special coating on the screen that makes the light reflect in a non-normal way. Uh, so, but you can get those screens. The Hisense one comes with its own screen. It's bundled with a screen. But you can get other ultra short throw projectors that don't have a screen. You buy your own. Ha uh, screen Innovations makes one. A hundred inch would be about four grand. Elite Screens makes one. A hundred inch is about 1100 bucks. So that's a lot less expensive. Mm -hmm. If you get an ultra short throw projector in the four to five thousand dollar range, and a screen, another screen for eleven hundred, you're into it for four, five or six grand. That's a lot, but you'll pay a lot more than that for a hundred inch flat panel. So it's very important for projectors to have a good screen. Absolutely, you can't just use bed sheets. No, 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 no. <laughs> not not, on not the white my world. Wall, it's not very good. No, and the problem is walls have texture. Even a flat. Um, uh, sheetrock wall has texture to it and that will affect the image. Uh, a sheet will have billows and wrinkles and it won't be flat. A, a projection screen really needs to be very flat, very uniform in its reflective capabilities and, and characteristics. And how is it? Is it great? That, uh, that projector? TV, the dual, dual for, laser? As a replacement for a large panel TV, in your living room, it's wonderful. That's what it's designed to do. I do not recommend it for a dedicated home theater, uh, which if you have, a, you know, you have a room where you can co completely control the lighting, and it's designed really as a home theater, I do not recommend the laser TV for that because the black levels are poor. So if you, if you have a big TV in your living room and you wanna watch the game, you know, the big Super Bowl or a big hockey game or whatever you're into, that's a great way to do it. But as a dedicated home theater projector, I don't recommend it. Uh, and then the, uh, the, the big trend or the big story here is 8K. Yeah. Uh, but to get a good 8K, you need at least 75 inch or something to oh, see uh, the pixels. Well, or I mean, geez, think? I've seen 8K. I think I saw at Sony, they were talking about an 8K at 50 inches, which is ridiculous in my opinion. There's just no need for 8K at a screen size of 50 inches. Inches. You need a big screen in order to appreciate all the detail that 8K is giving you. So, you know, I would want it to be at least 75, 85, 100 inches. And even then, when you're sitting 10 feet away, you're not gonna even be able to see because of the limitations of our human visual system, you're not gonna be able to see all that detail. Plus the fact there's no 8K content, except for a little bit on YouTube. Um, that's it, that's it. Everything else is gonna get upscaled. And so they're all talking about the quality of the upscaling projector. I thought it was kind uh, of processor, sorry. fascinating that Samsung had a guy from Amazon Prime yeah. talking about the 8K, yeah. as if maybe they're gonna make content for that. Yeah, well, I that suppose. That would be the place, Netflix and Amazon maybe. It would be the place. It's not gonna be broadcast over the air. Japan has 8K satellite 
um, mm. broadcast now, the one channel. And in 2020, they're going to broadcast the Tokyo Olympics in 8K, some of it. Uh, but other than that, online is the only place you're going to get it. And like I said, YouTube has some. I guess Amazon Instant or Amazon mm. Prime Video uh, will probably have some. But they're going to need to shoot in 8K, and there aren't very many 8K cameras, and those cameras are very expensive, and so I don't think we're going to see any native 8K content for a while. There were rumored sensors by Sony that they were going to do 8K, but yeah. we haven't seen the cameras yet. No, we, well, we saw at, at the Sony press conference today, uh, somebody was talking about an 8K sensor and an 8K studio camera. They don't, their, their cinema cameras aren't 8K yet but they have some studio cameras that are. So they do exist. I think RED has one too. Uh, Canon probably does. So they exist, but they're expensive. Do you think we're going to see 8K projectors for affordable prices, or it's going to be very well, hard? <laughs> prices can't go down very fast. I mean, 4K has only been in the market, what, five years, if that? And already the prices have plummeted dramatically. And so, you know, I expect the same thing will happen with 8K eventually, but uh, it'll cool. be a while. But thanks a lot. This is uh, the Mecca. We have to go and check everything. We have to go so, check everything else out, so yeah. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Thanks.